So Donald Trump is participating in this golf tournament thing where professional players are involved and also other uh, figures. And it originally sparked controversy because it's backed by Saudi Arabian money. The Saudi Arabian government is funding it. And the, you know, family of 9-11 victims raised the concern and the kind of anger towards the fact that figures such as Donald Trump were participating in this event because of Saudi Arabia's uh, suspected involvement in the 9-11 attacks and all of those things. And so, and also a bunch of stuff the Saudi Arabian government is doing that is super, super harmful um, and dangerous. So, with all that being said, separate from that, a lot of people are at this event that are big right-wing figures. And there's a moment here where the whole crowd is chanting, this is why it went viral, the whole crowd is chanting, let's go Brandon, which if you missed it, <laughs> is the replacement for saying F Joe Biden. It's like, let's go Brandon is the code word for it, like what a bunch of middle schoolers would do. But they're all chanting, let's go Brandon. And the camera pans to see Donald Trump's reaction. And with him is Tucker Carlson, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and some other people. And let's watch this clip. But then I have, this isn't just, let's talk about all these people at a golf tournament. That's stupid. Um, that's why I didn't even really cover the original golf tournament uh, story about Trump participating in it. Cause like, yeah, of course, I don't, well, that's irrelevant. There's a larger point around it that I want to make, but first let's just um, take a look at this. So we're all having a good time chanting F Joe Biden in code words, being a bunch of middle schoolers because we can't swear from a mommy. So we have to say, let's go, Brandon, instead. Um, but whatever, that's not so important to me. What's important is this scene. Marjorie Taylor Greene next to Tucker Carlson, next to Donald Trump, next to Donald Trump Jr., next to Kimberly screaming Guilfoyle. So why is that image so profound to me? I think it represents the reason why the right beats the left so often on branding. Like, I think the actual core of the message, as vague and general as you can make it on either side, the left has a much more appealing core, right? There's, at its best and at its roots, being progressive is about allowing people to be who they are, you know, uh, allowing people to have good, meaningful, individual rights, uh, pursue a life that makes them happy. And then economically, it's all about trying to get the government to work for the average person to take a little bit of the burden off of uh, people economically to uh, set up systems that work amazing in other countries. Like at its core, I do think the country as a whole would buy into our messaging if our messaging was better because the core of our message is awesome, but then our messaging sucks a lot of times. And so part of the reason for that is there's no coordination between politicians, media in the way that there is on the right. Now, is there a buddy buddy between certain cable figures and uh, politicians? You know, even the example of Chris Cuomo and his brother, Andrew Cuomo, obviously, yes. So there, this does occur in liberal circles as well. But the level of friendship, communication, coordination between right-wing figures within government and uh, media and beyond is very, very significant. And it's the reason that you see like all the, no one's talking about C CRT and all of a sudden everyone's talking about CRT and every single person on every right-wing YouTube channel, uh, cable news show, Donald Trump, Martin Taylor Green is saying CRT is the biggest threat to your children. It's not because there's a secret memo that goes around or it's some conspiracy. No, it's because they first have relationships with one another and they also watch each other closely and try to follow, follow the same messaging to let their message be heard loudly and clearly uh, by as many people as possible. And they're really effective at it. Why is it that all of a sudden people are talking about for multiple days, Dr. Seuss and every right wing show that I've ever seen is talking about how Dr. Seuss is getting canceled because of crazy woke mob and all of, you know, the cable news shows on Fox, you know, Fox, for example, is covering it. And then the 
minority leader Kevin McCarthy is reading a Dr. Seuss book saying it's not canceled in Congress just like that. It's because there's a synchronization. There's this understanding that we're on the same team and we're pushing for the same thing. There is much less of that on the left. And I think it's to our detriment. Now, should we be dishonest and push me messaging we don't believe in and all that? No. But if we were much more rigid and uniformed with our messaging and didn't constantly infight and didn't constantly try to tear each other down, we would have a better chance at getting our message out there and also we would have a better chance of characterizing ourselves the way that we want to be characterized and not the way that the right characterizes us like a good example of this is <laughs> i don't think we should be defending joe biden every single day for every single thing he does at all um, but to give you the comparison when trump did something that was unpopular generally in the country Every single right-wing media station kicked into gear to defend him for it. Whenever Joe Biden is doing his day-to-day -day activities, no one's really defending him that aggressively. And that's part of the reason why his poll numbers are so in the dumps. It's like, even most liberals go, yeah, Joe Biden's kind of a mess right now. And that's part of the reason why you get this consensus around Joe Biden ha having been, been a failure, even though he's done a lot more positive things than Donald Trump ever did. And you could pump those up much more. And so this image, again, represents that to me. It represents there's a congresswoman, the largest, you know, cable news host who's a right winger, Trump, his son, the son's wife, all together, all friendly with one another all talking with one another about what they want for the future of the country. And there's this level of understanding that they're pushing for the same goal and they're on the same team. Um, and I don't think we have that on the left. And so then we don't unify to the left to the extent that we would need to, to dominate them when I think we could dominate them just based on the core of our messaging. Now, when we get distracted with the far, far edge of the left, that only wants to talk about, you know, crazy, uh, this stuff and is kind of wacky in their own right. And that's what we let us be characterized as. We have no chance. We can't unify around that. But if we unify in a, around the core of the message that I think is truly progressive, I think most people buy into the idea that we should have a better healthcare system, that we should do everything in our power to have uh, people have good, you know, justified wages that represent the value they're putting into the economy. And you shouldn't go absolutely bankrupt because you have a medical event. And people shouldn't be stigmatized and uh, bullied and assaulted in many cases for being a certain identity. And I think most people buy into that. But then we, we take it to these aggravating extremes and we're very uh, not welcoming of new voices and new people because they're not perfectly acceptable and they don't perfectly pass our litmus test and all those things. So if we could get to the core issues that we actually believe in and keep it to those and... Uh, then be more uniformed and on the same team with our messaging. I really do think we could do much better politically as we see the right do, even though their messaging is not popular. I mean, I mean, sorry, their messaging is popular. Their actual message, what they actually mean isn't popular. What they do when they get in power is cut taxes for wealthy people. And what, you know, besides nominating some, some very, very conservative judges, but that's about it. So I think the moderate part of the country, as well as the left could un unite around the same message of equity and justice and all of these things if we did a better job of branding ourselves as believing in those things.